Okay, so today we are going to ta- start a new topic. I had given you a paper which is uh, quadrature signal processing. Did you, how many have taken a look at it? Many have not. I strongly recommend you read it because uh, that paper is very well written. I mean, generally I go through that in the classroom, but it's so well readable that you can get it on your own. And if I do that, uh, repeat that lecture in the classroom, then we will miss out a few things that, a new stuff that we would like to cover. And anyway, it's like a revision of uh, signal processing fundamentals. What, whoever read it, what was your opinion? Good, no? So, visually, fundas are clear, right? How to, how to make I and Q spectrum diagrams. And if you are going to work in this space, or even any field, this IQ business will be very useful to you. And the main thing is the fundamentals of complex, you know, what is complex number? And I don't think we are taught a complex number in a correct way. That's my opinion. At least I wasn't. Complex number sounds more like complicated, but actually it's not. So it's a mathematical convenience that we are using and we get confused with real and complex. So um, I strongly recommend you read that, uh, that paper. That will help you in terms of IQ. Um, you know, how do you understand I and Q? Uh, signal processing specifically when it comes to direct conversion receiver. So today we're going to start mixers. The topic of mixers we had uh, uh, kind of brushed through in various uh, architecture business. So now we're going to kind of get get into it. Okay. So topic of mixers we had uh, kind of brushed through in the beginning uh, uh, in many lectures and I just explained at that time mixer was a frequency translation. Right. So what what do we use it for? translation. And why do we need frequency translation? First of all, we want our signal to be as high frequency as possible to transmit and the reason for that is, simplest reason, antenna size. And then can we do everything at that high frequency? Signal processing? No. Why? No. Besides that, there is a bigger problem. If I had to process it at that frequency, Nyquist theory. Right, so you have to operate at twice the signal, uh, you know, wherever that signal is. So that doesn't work because it'll be extremely expensive to do A to D converter, D to A converter business, right? So then, what we like to do is we like to take the signal, process everything at baseband. Baseband means the frequencies in which, in which we, the, whatever the data or voice or audio uh, or content is there, you process it at lowest frequency possible. And then you, at the end, you shift it to a high frequency for transmission. Similarly, during receiving, you take the signal, first you translate it to the lowest frequency possible, okay? And then what do you do? Then you do the processing at lowest frequency possible. So you have A to D converter, D to A converter, all that business is happening at lowest frequency. That's kind of the basic foundation of communication systems, right? So this is what, and mixer is your friend in this domain because mixer is going to, take whatever content, signal content you have, it will take to highest possible frequency for transmission or it will bring it down to lowest possible frequency. So this frequency translation business is a very important, right? So let's learn that. So in the transmit case, you know, we are going in high frequency, we are translating to high frequency. In receive case, we are uh, doing the processing in baseband, so we would translate to lower frequency, right? Now let's go back to uh, our... We know that in time domain versus frequency domain. And we know that um, in time domain, if we do multiplication in frequency domain, what do we do? Convolution. So this is what is called frequency shifting, right? And we will see that now. So the basic uh, mixer is, uh, it's, we can start with simplest multiplier. Okay. So multiplier. Okay. And um, let's say this is my omega LO. 
local oscillator frequency. Is everybody familiar now with the term local oscillator? Huh? It's the frequency, high frequency where we would like to transmit. Hmm? And in this case, we are receiving a baseband signal. Not receiving, but baseband signal we are looking at. And let's say that baseband signal looks like this. Okay? Like as if my voice, you know, it's going up and down in time domain. So this is in time domain. And in time domain, our LO looks like this. It's very high frequency. The amplitude is uniform, but it's just not showing up. Frequency amplitude is the same. Okay? And now, when I mix the two, each point you are multiplying in time domain. So here what we would expect is, let's use a different color. You get the point, right? So, and now I can delete. What? This is what our waveform is going to look like. Okay? So the envelope is the one which is modified according to the baseband signal and in between you have the, the yellow signal. And this signal we can transmit at high frequency. Okay. Now let's look at the frequency domain. What is really going on? So frequency domain, let's use a, what does the baseband signal look like? Baseband signal is at, at DC. So let's say it looks like this. This is zero. And what does LO look like? LO looks like, what will LO look like? If this is zero, omega LO, let's say this is cos of omega LOT. And this would be minus omega or this is plus omega. Everybody gets it? And when we multiply them in time domain, what do we expect in frequency domain? Convolution, right? So then we would flip omega L around and we will scan it um, from left to right. And what we would end up seeing is this. This is my zero. Something like this. This would be minus omega L. This is plus omega L. Okay. All right. So let's go through some specifications for the mixer now. Is this clear? Huh? Visually? So let's say if we use a simple multiplying mixer. Which means... So here we have RF coming in. And here I have intermediate frequency going out. And this is my LO. Let's say the signal RF is ARF cos of omega RF P and this would be ALO cos of omega LO T and what do we expect here? This would be equal to ARF ALO divided by 2 and you know the math, right? Multiplication of two cosines will give you plus and minus and half is going in there to the trigonometric uh, cos of omega rf minus omega lot plus cos of omega rf plus omega lot okay so this part is used for down conversion and this is up conversion okay Understood? So this would be used probably in the receiver case. This particular term will be used. This would be used maybe in the transmitter case where we would like to transmit high frequency. Okay. So let's take an ideal math example. Now, um, one thing uh, that I want to make sure. Okay. Let me finish the second part and then explain it to you. Hmm? Conversion here. What is the conversion gain? GC is equal to desired IF output amplitude divided by RF input amplitude. So in this case we have half ARF ALO divided by 
AI, which is equal to half of AL. Okay, so this would be our conversion mean. So obviously, you want the LO ability to be as high as possible. Huh? Now, in active mixers, what does active mean? There is some DC current is flowing through in the mixer. Okay, and I'm going to explain uh, by end of this uh, lecture, you will know what what how to identify that. In active mixer, the gain is generally greater than one, and in passive mixer. And we are going to go through both the topologies. The conversion gain is generally less than one. Okay. In, okay. So this loss is generally okay because you have an LNA which is preceding this particular state. So it will have certain gain and it will have a noise figure. If a passive mixer has a loss, what does it signify with respect to its noise figure? Noise figure will be pretty high. Okay. So, uh, but you can use passive mixers um, to save current and as long as you meet the system level specification, you can do that, okay. Now, one thing I left out in this previous uh, discussion right here, which I want to explain to you as a side note, is when we are mixing, right, and this is a good interview question. So, if you have RF and you have LO, and it's such a trivial stuff, but you can get fumbled if you, if your foundation is not clear, okay. Then, um, if you are multiplying the two, what is the unit of the output? Here. Output waveform. No, no, no. Mixer. Mathematical. I have A sin omega t and you have B cos omega, uh, cos omega t and cos omega and omega 2. What would be the unit of the output? Volt square, right? That doesn't make sense. You cannot measure volt square. Huh? Because if you are looking at a trans transient waveform, you cannot do volt square. In reality, what do you see? You just see some voltage. So, what we are conveniently ignoring generally in the textbooks and everywhere else is there is a co coefficient here C, which is like a proportionality constant, okay, which will give you the final voltage. So, this proportionality constant, its unit have to be brought into the picture. So, this becomes C times a R F and A L O divided by 2 and the units of C are, uh, units are per volt, okay. So just keep this in mind because it's, it can be a little bit um, intimidating if such a question has been asked to you and suddenly you are shaken up, you know, I thought I knew mixers and then suddenly, very simple question, right. So just keep this in mind because you are measuring something on an O score, you will see the mixer output but you are not seeing volt square, you are seeing voltage, right, you are measuring voltage. So, this part is kind of in the picture, you have to take it. Is this part clear why I showed this to you? Okay. So, whenever we say here, um, you know, generally in the textbooks, you will see all these terms, right? So, this always, its assumption is there is a proportionality constant is there, which is per volt. Hmm? Okay. The second part we are going to talk about is noise figure. NF. So, this is given by SNR at RF port divided by SNR IF, okay, wherever the output of the mixer is. Now, there are two terms which you need to understand. One is called single sideband noise, okay, it is also denoted as NFSSB. Okay. So, here the desired RF tone, whichever it is, it is only on one side, okay, of the, of the, of the LO. So, for example, uh, let us say I have, this is my omega LO and this is my uh, RF signal, okay. If that is the situation, and, and then uh, when you translate it down, what you will get is, uh, I am showing that as because it is not uh, linear in terms of frequency, there is a distance, quite a distance. So, when you, when you down convert, we are going to get this, right, you will get something like this in frequency domain, which will be uh, omega IF is equal to 
omega rf minus omega lo okay that the spectrums so in this particular case the omega rf is assumed to be only on one side okay so in this case what will happen is if there is a noise in at this location that will obviously come down here correct right? it will also get translated and what you will see is if you take a mirror image if there is noise on the other side of halo that will also show up over here agreed because uh, cos function it doesn't be like you know if it's omega halo minus rf or rf minus halo it will mix down both on the on top of each other okay so you can see that uh, this is my uh, image noise we know this is called image frequency this is just an example i'm giving you and uh, this would be our in band noise okay agreed so do you think this nf ssb you can see that it's bad the number would be worse because signal is the same but noise is uh, you know coming from both sides okay the second term that we will define is called double side band noise figure okay and as you can imagine in this case what you would have is okay it's easier to draw okay so in case of the double side band uh, what will happen is you have your signal is on both sides so there is no something like this so this is a double side band so obviously um, then you can say that my nf ssb is equal to nf dsb plus 3d okay because uh, you have double the noise power and again this is rms you have to do root mean square addition over here okay and most of the cases we would use this particular uh, as as accurate so you can see that the nf ssb is at least 3d okay if the nf dsb is zero let's say um, then uh, you know you will you'll get 3 db as the minimum okay if mixer is ideal mixer a typical nf noise figure ssb is equal to something like 10 to 15 db okay so you can see that you know we are used to in lna we are used to maybe 2 to 3 db of noise figure you are trying to go below 2 db and here right at the outset you get 10 to 15 db but you have to have lna in front to take over this noise figure i think that's pretty clear all right so the next thing uh, we are going to talk about is linearity any questions so far whatever i have covered uh, yeah so let me give you an example in this case right you are talking about how did this show up so let's say if you take i'll give you a different uh, direct conversion example okay so this is zero and let's say this is in the direct conversion example you have signal on both sides right so this is my omega rf and this is my minus omega r correct and then let's say there is noise in this noise in this okay if you are doing direct conversion what would you do we will multiply by omega l right which is right here and at this point agree okay so then uh, this will translate to in the in our section looking like this right so we have okay now signal is correlated right so what will happen in signal case it will double 
okay factor of 2 and then your noise over here will come up here and then there will be another set of noise from the left and right side okay so you would get uh, uh, you would get your uh, after <coughs> Two times uh, as RF times your gain, mixer gain, and the noise will also be two times your noise times mixer gain. Something like that. you got it? Okay. So in this case, uh, you can see that um, um, compare this to the previous case where signal is only on one side. Okay, the noise shows up twice. The signal only shows up once. As a result of which, there is a 3 dB uh, difference. Correct, correct, correct. Twice on the. Example, what are you about? Yeah, what do you about? Huh. Huh. Hmm. No, no, uh, I think I know what's going on. Um, see, if, if we were doing what we were doing here, something like this, right? In this case, so that's what you're asking. And now what is your question? Why would be noise four times? Yeah, but one will go, it will not come at IF, right? Is that what you are thinking about? The Only one will show up at IF, IF frequency, that's why. But I, I understand your confusion. Okay, all right. So the next part we will talk about is linearity of the mixer. So these are all definitions, okay? So this is very similar to what we have done in LNA, IIP3, uh, P1 dB, etc. You just have to choose the correct frequencies. When you do simulations, you have to choose the correct frequencies. So basically, RF, LO, and IF needs to be correctly chosen. During simulations, whenever you do simulation. So all this stuff. Are we going to go through an example for that in the project? We are, right? So they will go through uh, simulating, okay? Good. So that would give you good practice there. So let's say the mixer, I'm going to break it down in two pieces. Okay. So this is like A, this is B, and this is C. This is my IF. Hello. So what I'm showing here is There is some nonlinearity. The mixer, I'm breaking it down. It's separate nonlinearity in the RF path. LO path is full swing, as we are going to see. So there, any nonlinearity is only zero crossing that matters. We're going to go through that a little bit later. But for now, just uh, think about this, right? What will happen in the in the three three cases, right? So let's draw the spectrum, which is what you should be good at by now. Right now, just linearly uh, amplitude, linear, non linear. Okay? Okay. So, um, what will in the spectrum case, what it would look like? So, let's say the signal contents like this. So, we have so these are our interferers omega 1, omega 2. Okay? And this is my omega desire, let's say. Something like this. Okay. So um, after you go after you go through from A to B, what do you expect? If there is a third order here, uh, you will get two tones and there will be two baby tones right next to it. Okay. So then uh, we would 
we would draw this again and you would see you would see I'm just exaggerating this a little bit more because of the second or uh, third order nonlinearity I would see this okay do you see that and there will be of course this so this is omega 1 omega 2 what would be this frequency 2 omega 2 minus omega 1 and what would be this frequency 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 okay so this is due to third order uh, non-linearity uh, non of this uh, block okay circuit block in the RF bar agreed right okay now what will happen when we translate that down using a mixer mixer doesn't know to distinguish between our desired signal and the non-linearity in front of it so the entire thing will show up <coughs> so we we'll see this as well as we'll see this particular term that would be at C. Any questions on this? Whatever we have done as a spectrum, okay? Okay. Any questions? Let's move on to the next concern. You will hear something called SPUR, spurs. Okay, this is a term very commonly used in uh, by RF people and spurs means spurious stones. Okay, so what's really going on is the following. The mixer's job is just multiplying the two frequencies. Okay, and let's say you have, you thought that you have LO and RF. These are the only tones which were there. But you could have harmonics of RF. Or there would be content at harmonics RF, harmonics of RF frequency. Okay, let's say you thought that you are only transmitting 900 megahertz. But there are, at 1800 megahertz, there is something else there. At 20, uh, uh, 27 megahertz, there is something existing, right? And you have harmonics of your LO. Okay, you thought that you are only you are having 900 megahertz tone, but it's nonlinear because it's a very large signal. It will have harmonics, right? Now these harmonics can multiply also and show up in our desired band. Okay, and that would be totally undesirable. Okay, so they land on desired RF, desired IF. So this would not be acceptable. Okay, so whenever you design a mixer, uh, this F spur is generally defined as M times RF times FRF plus N times FLO, okay, and these are any integer combination. Okay, so uh, when you are designing a system, you want to make sure that there is nothing at these frequencies, uh, at RF frequencies, okay, wherever the harmonics of LO will be there, okay. So you make sure that uh, only your desired signal is being translated and nothing, you know, which is existing. So that's why you need these filters in the, uh, at the input to remove stuff which is, uh, which is not in that. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right. So now uh, let me take an example to, to tell you about this. Okay. So we will take an example of FM radio. And this is the old, not the internet radio that you are used to, but uh, if you actually buy a radio, FM radio, uh, classic FM radio, this is what happens there. So there is uh, generally the FM radio 
method it's going from 88.1 what is radio mirchi amazing right you all remember 98.2 do you know what that is megahertz okay they are transmitting at 98.2 megahertz and so the the spectrum is between 108.1 megahertz so next time you are riding a car or something and you turn on the radio you will immediately uh, figure out what that 88.2 or 98.7 whatever that is that is a channel that's allocated to them so these are all the i mean it's like a, a skyscraper here right so then there are various channels something like that so these are different different radio channels some places there are no channels right so uh, so these channels um, what we are trying to do is we are trying to translate them down okay and typically the final output if in an fm radio is 10.7 megahertz okay and 10.7 megahertz let's not get into there why they choose it because uh, there is a filter bandpass filter 10.7 megahertz so once the whole world has decided 10.7 megahertz then that filter becomes ultra cheap similarly in medium wave frequencies it's 455 kilohertz okay so the filter becomes like zero cost almost because the whole world is using that exact same component okay so it's mass produced so this 10.7 megahertz filter is there actually it's a analog filter and then there goes the demodulation here we are not going to go into the demodulation aspect of it right now okay so this uh, 10.7 megahertz is where you would uh, you would filter down uh, one of these tones okay so then how do you choose different channels what would you do oscillator frequency we will keep moving around okay such that the difference between the two frequencies is 10.7 megahertz is that clear so when you are actually changing uh, the dial on your on your car you are actually changing the lo okay you are not changing the entire receiver to tune to different different frequencies right that will be disaster okay so all you are doing is lo frequencies is uh, that you are going to learn in this uh, course uh, is designed using a pln phase lock loop okay so that we will learn how do you change the lo electronically uh, correct no 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 you didn't hear it correctly okay so he is absolutely right i wish i had brought those uh, that radio uh, i had this radio at home it's a beautiful piece um, i mean just thought of it kind of gets me nostalgic right as you can see from my face i have lit up suddenly right because i have played with these radios when i was a child and generally there is a as i forgot to name sorry ha huh? murnal said right uh generally what happens is in that case i'll go kind of and i have done all this business myself my father was not around okay so it's this is like a um bucket metal bucket you can think of it right and these are fins inside there are fins vertical fins agree and that's one electrode and here i'm just trying to explain what he is talking about is it clear okay i'll explain so imagine uh, there are two plates of the capacitor okay one of them is stationary which is the green bucket and the other part is a uh, rotating rot rotating so when i keep my rotating piece like this what will happen the cap will be maximum because you are covering and then let's say i start moving around what will happen the cap will reduce and that's exactly what is going on what he is talking about right so these are called gang capacitors because they have whole bunch of uh, capacitors and this they are they are just i i just wish next time i go to chor bazar i'll find one radio and we'll take a look at it and it's, it's just and it has lots of valves uh, you know vacuum tubes and things like that so what he is talking about is this what is this doing this is actually changing this frequency there is a local oscillator that local oscillator frequency is we are changing okay it's not the filter that we are changing 
That's all I'm trying to say. It's the local oscillator frequency because and a local oscillator frequency is decided by what? 1 over square root of L and C. L is given, L is fixed, some fixed, and the capacitance, I'm changing it very slowly. Okay? Because, uh, you know, this capacitor value is quite small because the distance is quite large. Okay? So, fascinating stuff. So, this is what we are trying to do. Sorry, I took a diversion, but I hope uh, this is exciting. So, if I have to do 10.7 megahertz, what would be the frequency here? Can somebody tell me? Let's say it's a low side injection. What does low side injection mean? Logically, LO is lower side than the RF. High side injection means LO is on a higher side than the RF. Let's say low side injection. Can somebody calculate the two frequencies? Where would the LO frequency change from? Huh? Calculate Karuna. Rural. You have to use a calculator. Remember this. 10.7 megahertz is very easy to show up. Ajay ji. Ek to bolo. करना क्या है अब करो ना नंबर बोलो दो दो नंबर बोलो मेरी का 77.8 इज इट 8 हां हां मेगा हर्ट्ज एंड देन द अदर वन वुड बी 90 Everybody agrees? So we just, that whole thing is shifted down. Okay, so this is what a typical FM radio in car, whatever you're doing, right? Now, let me tell you something which is very interesting, right? So let's say if you take uh, minus three times, uh, 73.8 megahertz plus 3 times 77.4 megahertz. Can you calculate what this number is? Let's say my RF is at this frequency and my LO is at this frequency. This is to just to demonstrate this M and N business for you. Huh? Agreed? 10.8 megahertz. So the FM radio bandwidth is 200 megahertz, uh, 200 kilohertz, okay. So, you are 10.6 megahertz to 10.8 megahertz. And suddenly, a combination of these frequencies show up at the edge of your band, okay. So, sometimes you are you are listening to something and you hear something else uh, right there. And it's happening because somebody is illegally transmitting something somewhere at some multiple frequencies and that shows up. Or, you know, due to artifacts of your circuit, non-linearity artifacts. And you have heard this, right? Uh, a weak signal in and out going in. Uh, so this could happen. Okay. So it's, it's important that you clean up. RF input, okay, uh, so that uh, the impairment is below uh, below the the desired signal to noise ratio that you have. You have right? Uh, did this example make sense to you? What I'm trying to do here? Oh, what's up? Okay, okay. What's the next important piece when you're designing a mixer? <coughs> Number five is, number five brings back great memories. Do you know what number five is? Are you familiar with number five? When you say number five? No, it doesn't ring anywhere. Okay. Well, I'll tell you a story. Uh, there is a movie called Short Circuit. And nothing to do with electrical engineering. 
but the name of the movie is Shark Circuit. If you get a chance, please see it. I don't know if it's on Netflix or Amazon, but it's one of the very old classic movies. It's about a one of the robots becomes, uh, you know, it has uh, it does it ceases to become it and becomes he. Okay, so number five is the name of that robot. That's why this memory came back. Okay, well, if you get a chance, uh, please take a look. It's hilarious. Uh, uh, there is a Indian fellow who's who's, who's casted um, as as one of the scientists. And interesting part is that person is actually not Indian. Huh? He's an American person who has acted like an Indian. And till recently, I thought he was Indian. And to find out that actually he's an American fellow who just is acting in that movie. And he's like a good Jew. He's, a, he's, he's portrayed as a Gujarati person. Huh? Fascinating you know, what people do. Um, so take a look and I'm sure you'll, you'll, you'll like it. I hope you, I, I don't think it's okay. Okay. So uh, talk about isolation. So we have this RF. Hmm? Hello. RF. Right. So <coughs> generally, as I said, the LO amplitude is very high. Okay. So then uh, what will happen is um, you can have one part of the coupling is uh, very first thing that, that is worrisome is there is a large amplitude of LO, it will propagate to your eye. Okay. Now what is going on here in this part? You should have a good feel for that, that part. What are we trying to do? We are trying to detect a very weak signal. We, we are building it up. So at the baseband side, what do we try to do? Max out the gain as much as possible. Okay. So which means there is a lot of gain uh, once you down convert to baseband. Okay. So if there is an LO to IF feed through, okay, which means even though the signal is at LO frequency, when it goes to the IF port, it will still harass the gain stages. Okay. And what will happen if you, if you are trying if you're putting in such a large signal, uh, even though it's parasitic coupled to the to the IF port, it will saturate the next stage. Okay. Here we are trying to detect a microvolt, millivolt type of signal, and here you have a one volt uh, going up down, up down, up down in your LO port, right? And it leaks through from LO to IF isolation is very critical. Understood? What's the reason for the being critical? We don't want to saturate the high gain stages which are in our basement. We want them to be in linear mode for our desired RF signal. Remember? So that's one issue you have to worry about. The second part is if, if this uh, LO signal, and you know how it shows up here, right? Due to the uh, any parasitic coupling, either due to pad, either due to, uh, you know, RF uh, parasitic coupling from ports, right? It will show up at the antenna, it will go outside the antenna and will come back in after reflection. Or let's say you are holding on to the antenna port, then it will reflect back. And that will again feed back right in our receiver. And then what will happen in a direct conversion receiver? We will get DC. Well, the signal will be at DC, right? And this LO signal is pretty large, so even after attenuation, it will come right back. And so, and this will become, uh, look like a DC offset. Okay, that we learned in our previous lecture, right? So, uh, give me, let's say, 10 minutes and it will come clear. Okay, good question. Ayaz. Question Ayaz is asking is why do you have LO as a large amplitude? Okay, so I will come to that uh, uh, shortly. I, I mean, one simplest example is if you remember the gain, right? You want the gain to be as high as possible, so you need the amplitude to be as high as possible. But even before... Uh, rather than giving that as a reason, I want to hold for another 10 minutes. I'm going to come to that. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Uh, so, <coughs> okay. So, we talked about both, uh, both the problems. One is LO to IF isolation, LO to RF isolation. Okay. So, both of them we have to worry about. 
okay so keep these in mind so property of the mixer when you design a mixer you want to worry about all these things so now we're going to start the circuit level analysis of mixer and every mixer topology we will apply all these criteria what is my gain what is my isolation what is uh, you know how much will feed those kind of things right so let's start so uh, first i'm going to start with a two port mixer what two port mixer means is i just have two ports and then this is my v out and this is kind of a non linear v in okay so v out is given by uh c1 v in plus c2 v in squared okay okay so in this case you could say that my uh, i'm applying both rf plus lo i can just add them and apply to this simplest way to do a mixing is this right so then uh, when do you think you'll get a multiplication action can you imagine correct so vn is let's say v rf cos of omega rf t plus v lo cos of omega lo t okay so if you look at this particular term do you see that a plus b and square of it so 2ab and right there is our multiplication that we wanted okay and that's what we would be uh, looking at so cross term will be equal to 2 c2 v rf v lo cos of cos of omega lo agree so then this will give you uh, c2 rf and v lo then you have omega rf minus omega lo t cos of plus cos of agree so typically this would be filtered out with very high frequency we can filter it and especially for receive portion okay so what is my conversion gain in this case it's going to be uh, c2 v rf v lo divided by v rf which will be equal to c2 v lo okay so let's take an example of a two port any questions on this <coughs> so let's take an example so circuit example would be who's our friend here a simple mosfet right it's a nonlinear square law device correct so i can just say okay so uh, what's going on here uh, you would get uh you know at output you will get if you tune this lc tank uh, to the frequency that you desire for example this one right then you would uh, you would get your uh, final output in in this case okay so what's bad about this what's obviously bad about this the lo is sitting right next to the rf so the two signals are added so the lo will immediately shoot through uh, out of the rf port okay so it's really it can radiate out lo can radiate out again you know uh, i'm starting with simple simple examples and every every circuit we will find problems and then we will try to solve the problem so this is why i mean you may say why are you even showing this to me right some people have done it some people have people have done mixers using this you need to appreciate what the problems it brings and simplicity of course it's one single device and we are getting a mixer for free right so so lo can lo lo can radiate straight away 
Okay. So uh, then you would immediately think, how do I improve this? Thing? Right now I'm applying RF and LO at the same point. So what's the next improvement? I forgot. Uh, what's who's behind you? I forgot your name. I forgot your name. Aruchi, how do you think we can improve this, this situation? So what's going on is, in this particular case, RF and LO are next to each other. So what's a natural extension to improve this thing? Because I want you to come up with a solution on your own. Any other? Anybody else? Huh? Mm, yeah, I mean, that would be the third level. Huh? Two different paths or two different ports of the transistor, let's say. So one of them goes to which one? Gate. And the other one goes somewhere else. Right? Logically, we can do this. So then how do we do that? Let's try that. Because I want you to feel comfortable about coming up with innovations on your own so that you can come up with my job is to teach you how to get there. Okay, so as uh, as she said, uh, you know, we will do RF here on this port, and we would do our LO at the uh, at the source node. Okay, gate and source, and let's see what happens. And we will do some solution there. So uh, now I'm going to put some biasing business here, so that you are very clear about how this works, right? So this is my transistor M1, and first of all, I need to bias this. Okay, and this is my R large. Okay, and then here I'm going to capacitively feed VRF, and this is our C blocking. What does this mean from DC point of view? C blocking disconnect the AC part, correct? And RL the V bias will be connected to the gate, and it will keep some bias current flowing in our transistor, agree? And from AC point of view, the capacitor looks like a short. And of course, RL is a large resistor, so there will not be any drop, AC drop across that resistor, clear? Okay, so, so I'm just doing a first level of your circuit right now, okay? The next one would be, we would like to keep some current flow here. Pi bias, okay? And then here, we would inject our VLO. Okay. Agree? So what is VGS1? It's VRF minus VLO. I'm not, of course, I'm, I'm ignoring the V bias term right now. Okay. I'm just talking about the AC term. Okay. So if we just look at the, the expression, ID is equal to half mu n c ox w by l and here what you will see is v bias minus vt uh, plus v rf minus agree and square of this okay Everybody understood what I did here? I put DC as well as AC in the equation. And we are only looking at VGS. So VGS is defined by these. Okay. So again, the cross term will be uh, equal to half mu n C ox W by L. And then you will have uh, VRF, VLO. Okay. Source DC voltage. Yeah, so what happens is uh, we have a current I bias flowing here. So that I bias will set a potential across this, and that will be uh, VGS minus VT. Sorry, uh, that will be equal to VGS. Right? So this DC bias current will set your VD sat at that point. 
so that's that's kind of incorporated in this equation right i d i bias you are saying this part yes if v r f equal to 0 and uh, v l o equal to 0 uh, then it has to meet the equation correct so that is what it is you are absolutely right okay all right so the cross term is this and then we have cos of Correct. So then, uh, everybody understood, right? What I'm doing because I'm jumping steps now. Okay. And then, so the conversion gain would be what will be the conversion gain? Can you tell me? Mu n c ox w by l and divide by 2 and then V L O. Agree? Okay. So, then we can say that is equal to half mu n C ox W by L V bias minus V T V L O divide by okay. And what does this look like? GM. So, this is our GM divided by 2 and VLO divided by VD side. Okay. And this generally we keep it 100 to 200 millivolts, if you remember, right, to keep uh, as our design equations. Okay. So, this particular equation hmm, is kind of a generic e expression. Right now, we are doing a MOSFET analysis. You can do exact same analysis for a bipolar transistor and the same equation um, is can come through. And in case of bipolar, this becomes what re re replaced by VDSAT. Do you remember the trick? VDSAT is in the MOSFET case, gets replaced by what in bipolar case? Huh? I have taught this to you in 618 everywhere. Huh? Anupam? Huh? No, no, no. Huh? No, no. I forgot. The most important point I taught you. This is an interview question. I taught you first. Anything you do in MOSFET, and if you do it in bipolar, the typical thing is VDSAT in MOSFET case gets replaced by VT, not threshold voltage, but KT over Q. Okay, remember that uh, because it comes everywhere, and that's why I'm showing this to you. So here it will be the VT, and what is value of VT? 26 millivolts. And right here you can see immediately why the gain in the bipolar case is larger. Okay. So, this is a critical point, remember that, make a note of it, uh, you do anything, gain of the bipolar transistor, gain of MOSFET stage, uh, you will see a parallel between bipolar and MOSFET. So, you do not want to be faithful to one side versus another, but you should know how to discriminate between the two cases, okay. Huh? Yeah, I mean, this is something I have taught earlier, okay. So, I am just giving you the conclusion uh, because we have practiced this in 618, uh, you do something in MOSFET case or you do something in bipolar case and you replace the VT by VDSAT and the same expression if you do the calculations will turn out to be true. Okay. So, right now I cannot go through the bipolar example but I am just taking that uh, similarity that we have observed. Okay. Yeah. However, uh, you know, so you can do a mixer with bipolar, but then why why do we do not use bipolars everywhere? What's the biggest stumbling block? Huh? Maybe. Uh, 
in case of mixer we can use a bipolar very well but what's the biggest stumbling block can you do an inverter with a bipolar that is the biggest stumbling block okay with a cmos with just two gates they look like perfect switches the bipolar is not a perfect switch that's the main reason that's very high level you need to remember okay okay so as we can see one of the reasons this particular topology is bad when it comes to uh, LO2 RF isolation. And the reason is uh, there are too many terms at the output as you can see. And the interesting term is only that 2AB term. Hmm? And it's like a, it's like not like a main act. Hmm? There are so many acts going on A square plus B square plus 2AB and you know, so we are only interested in that 2AB term, okay. So there is so much other stuff going on. Of course, this is not going to give you the best result, right. But this still works. Huh? It will, it will give you some attenuation, but still will be there because you are hammering it with such a large signal, right. Okay. okay. So now comes the next part. How can we, how can we fix this problem? Right? What was the problem we were trying to fix? We started with a simple uh, MOSFET. We added to the gate and we said, oh, bad. Because my RF isolation is bad. So then we said, we will move the LO to the source. And we said, okay, this is better. Right? But still the LO to IF isolation is still bad. Because there are so many actions going on in the yeah. strain. Right? So now we will get into multiplier based mix. So what this means is the main act is this multiplication A times B that we are desiring. Okay, so let's take an example. So this should, let's see what, how it does. So in this case we use our favorite diff pair. And now it will be clear to you why I am talking about LO amplitude as high. Okay, and this is going to be IB plus cos of, agree? So VLO is very large, so what does that mean? Not linear, but what happens to M1 and M2? The, the current is here, I1 and I2, one of them is on, other one is off, okay, so it's almost like digital, you're switching it on and off, on and off, and that's what we love to do all the time, okay, so what will happen in this case, so what will be my I out, huh? I out is equal to let's say uh, I1 minus I2, what do you think? Looks difficult, but I'll simplify it for you. Huh? I out is I1 minus I2. I mean, I've not shown it to you right now. Um, I could put a resistor and look at the difference between the voltages, or I can use a current mirror and difference out. But right now, I'm looking for I1 minus I2 because signal is contained in the difference there. Okay. So, what do you, how do you? Put an equation for this. Huh? What is it? There is no GM anymore, right? It's transistor is switch. It's on or off. How do you analyze this? Okay. So when M1 is on, what will I1 become? This whole thing. Okay. And when, when M2 is on, what will that become? it will become minus, okay. So do you see that in one cycle it will be plus, the other cycle it will be minus. So how do you write that? This becomes equal to sine of, of cos omega LOT, correct? And then times IB plus IRF cos of omega RFT, agree? Okay. So, what does sine of cos omega, uh, cos omega LOT mean? Hmm? 
So let's say I have a something like this, right? So that's my cost. So then it will look like this. Something like this, right? A square wave. Agree? So this square wave will have a lot of harmonics. Agree? And what are we interested in? The harmonic at a low frequency only. Okay? So you can write this square wave in terms of basically it's given by 4 by pi. And this derivation, I won't go through it, okay, times cos of omega LOT plus uh, one third cos 3 omega LOT plus one fifth cos 5 omega LOT, etc, etc, okay. I'm just representing this square wave by the, 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 the terms, right. So, what we are interested in is this part, 4 by 5, agreed? Okay, so now what is our conversion gain? So we will get I out is equal to I1 minus I2 and at desired frequency it's going to be given by 2 by pi uh, I RF cos of omega LO minus omega RF. I'm ignoring the plus term because just I, I don't have to write that. So this is most interesting term. Okay. So in this case, conversion gain is equal to 2 divided by pi by RF divided by RR. Okay. Agreed? Um, everybody understood why this is 2? Right? Two cos A cos B, no? so that I'm borrowing that two. I mean, this is yeah. Once you get the hang of it, you'll know. Okay, so uh, now let's look at the spectrum. Okay, let's say this is my omega RF, and here is my omega LO and then agree and if we mix them what we expect at the spectrum is you will see these these people showing up here maybe some stuff going on here some stuff going on here okay so now here it says RF, but actually it's a baseband signal. Okay, so this is at low frequency baseband. So when we are transmitting, which is the tone that we are most interested in? High frequency. Okay, and so the the tone that you would be interested in is probably let's say this one. Okay, that's what you want to transmit. Um, now what do we have to do with the rest of the tones? You have to filter them out before you transfer. So obviously do you see the problem with this circuit? What is this omega LO? This is showing up as feed through. Okay, this is okay. And if you use this as a transmitter, we will be in trouble. Because I need to design a filter which will be like a brick wall filter at this point to just send that particular one out. Okay? Agree? So this doesn't work very well for transmitter case. However, it may work okay for a receiver case, which is what I wanted to show you. So let's say we are doing down conversion and we will do the same thing. So here I have omega LO, 3 omega LO, 5 omega LO, okay. And let's say I had RF, which was right here. Okay. Huh. I, I know where you are. Just 30 seconds. Okay. So, 
if I uh, uh, if I take this, what will happen? If you omega L O three omega L O is part of that the square wave, okay? And then omega R F is right here. And now, what would be the final output that you will see? You will see difference between them landing up here. Okay, so this lands up here, and then you will still see your all these terms, and then you will see whole bunch of other stuff. Okay, now this is the receiver example, so it's a down conversion, and this was T X up conversion. Okay, so in this case, it's very easy for me to filter out. Everything else. Do you see that? Because things are far away. I have down converted it to low frequency, and after that, things are far away. Okay. So this can be used if you want to. The simplest circuit that we just described uh, for down conversion, up conversion, no, no, because uh, the other business, right? You know, all these things are also close by. Now, coming your name again, Tejas. Tejas asked me, why are you fooling? <laughs> Around here, right? Why are you only using this term? You can use this too, correct? But then, what do you need? You need a bandpass filter to take that out. Okay, I'm just looking for a spectrum which is at high frequency that I can transfer. Okay, okay, okay. So now, uh, how do we kind of different way of Doing this, another mixer, okay, think about it this way. So I'm kind of developing a story for you, step by step. So I could have given you the answer, but uh, otherwise you wouldn't appreciate all the issues that come along with it. So bear with me. So here is our V L O, okay, and we have R L and C, R L and C, and in this case, I can apply V R F, something like that, okay, and in this case, uh, you will get your G C will be equal to. Two divided by pi, gm times rl. Rl being the down. Okay. You can go through that. Again, here uh, in this case, what is the issue that we have? Isolation uh, from um, LO port to IF port. So let's look at the waveform at the output. What will happen? So let's say V R F is given like this. Okay. And our L O, the re, I'm intentionally choosing it to be slowly varying so we can really see what's going on. And if we if we put an L O, uh, which is, and here I'm just kind of intentionally not showing too large, something like this. And it keeps going on like this. So this is your VLO. So you're turning on the transistor M1 and M2, something like this. So in this case, M1, M2, M1, M2, something like this. Okay. So can you visualize what will happen at V out is equal to V1 minus V2? Whenever M1 is on. The voltage will be low, right? And whenever is M2 on, the voltage on the other side will go low. So this, so I think I will just draw it for you, and then it will become very clear to you. Okay. So you would see something that looks like this.
something like this is it clear because you are just chopping the signal back and forth squashing back and forth okay uh, now visually what does that tell you why is this bad visually uh -huh. but let's talk about the mixer properties which is our which isolation we are interested in LO to R, LO to uh, IF and here right here you see the problem the entire LO is existing at the RF because you're squishing back and forth back and forth back and forth and it's a large signal right it's almost like radio to rail signal and the RF signal is really tiny you're trying to amplify do you see that so do you see the problem with this circuit okay huh? and why is this happening so this is our uh, LO feed through issue that I wanted to uh, show you. So naturally, what is the solution? Now you are going to come up with the solution. Okay. The problem we are going to solve is which one now? LO2 isolation. Okay. So I would like to take this circuit and modify it such that I don't have this problem. What would you do? Was that? What is hurting you right now? Huh. So let's I'll 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 get the answer out of you. Fazan, you will be okay with that? Okay. So there are two components in the input. One is a bias component, okay? And the other one is a small signal riding on top of it. VR. Okay. What would you like to see at the output? Only the VRF part. Okay. And why is such a large feed through coming? Because the bias component IB is a, is a large part, right? Because that's a bias current. So that's getting ping pong every step of the way, right? So how can I do the take this circuit such that that bias component is removed? Okay. Can I give you a hint? Let's replicate this circuit one more time. And again, you will get bias and RF. Okay. And then the RF parts which are adding together, let's sum them together. And the RF parts which are subtracting, let's sum them together. And when we take a difference of all of them, what will happen? The bias current switching portion will get cancelled. Is that clear? I mean, a very high level, right? I replicate this circuit one more time. Okay. So that will give me yet another jing bang going on back and forth right and then i would i would combine the rf parts so that they add up and the 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 dc part automatically will get subtracted because two of them i will add two of them i will subtract okay let's do that and this is a very classic uh, mixer i mean i could have started from this but then you don't have appreciated all the pain and suffering that people went through over a long period of time right so, how do you do that? Right? So, this is kind of the fun part of mixer design. Okay. So, this is my VLO plus VLO minus. Okay. And here we have IB plus IRF. Agree? Now I will do another one and I will change the signs to my like. And here I will make this VLO minus VLO plus. Okay? So this is M1, M2. Please draw the picture in your book. Otherwise you will not get how to uh, right, draw the schematic and here in this case I'm going to make it IB minus IRF okay so I have I1 I2 I3 and I4 okay so again we will apply the same logic what will be I1 minus I2 will be equal to IB plus IRF 
times S L O T and what is I4 minus I3 is equal to I B minus I R F S is just a sign of the L O. Okay. So these are the differential currents we are looking at uh, at this point and this point. Okay. Now what I am going to do is I am going to look at the differential current but I am going to sum them up in a very peculiar fashion. So pay attention. So I am going to say okay, this is one and this is another one and then I am going to something like this. It does not look good. Okay, something like this. So then, what what do we get here? Can you can we write the expression here now? So we are going to get a differential current. Output current will be equal to I one minus I two hmm? plus I three minus I four, something like this. So you can see that. I1 and I3 are added together, okay, and I2 and I4 are added together. So you can see I1 and I3 are added together, and I2 and I4 are added together on the negative side, and we are taking a difference between them, okay. So um, I'm kind of probably a little bit fast, but I think we can, it's algebra that we are doing, okay. So when you do this, you will get your I out equal to 2 times I RF, RFT, switching. So this will give me 4 pi omega RFT. So the overall expression for I out will be equal to 4 divided by pi. Uh, I R F and then you have uh, cos of uh, and this 4 goes away and becomes 2 because 2 I took inside to combine uh, two classes, okay. So uh, what is going on here? Now here if you look at this, is there an omega LO term in there? Is there a chopping going on? Chopping is going on at the intermediate level but when the final thing is added, the bias current is not getting squished, okay, because it is getting cancelled uh, in, in the two cases, of course. So VRF the conversion gain is GC 4 divided by pi I RF RL divided by 2 times VRF will be equal to 2 divided by pi GM times R. So here basically we are saying that hey VRF huh, will produce I R F and I R F divided by V R F is equal to G. Okay. So um, in my notes, I'm going to show you, show you the exact schematic for this whole thing, along with the biasing circuits and everything. So one last point I wanted to make with you uh, before I let you go today is the following. Hmm? Uh, is this part clear that uh, this particular circuit? has we have taken care of the LO to IF isolation, okay, because uh, since we are taking two circuits, the switching I bias part will go away just because of the signs that we put in, okay. So please go through this math and then I will give you the exact schematic, uh, transistor level schematic in the notes. So one last summary that I would like you to carry with you is 
when you come to active circuits like active mixers right so typically you have some three stages first is you have rf input going on and then so this is v to i converter or a gm stage okay. and in between we have switches where we are applying vlo okay and after that you have some kind of resistor which is a i to v converter and then you get the RF. Okay. So, this is kind of the way it looks like uh, when it comes to active. And there is a current flowing from top to bottom. Okay. Uh, next time, we are going to start with something called passive mixing. No? So, in passive mixer, the concept is simple. You just uh, you have a VRF and then you have VIF and you have VLO. Okay. So, here in passive mixer, you are only observing VRF by using switches. Okay. It is VRF going on and you are simply choosing which point to look at. Let us say you have two outputs differential outputs coming out of your RF port. Then in one case it will go straight through, other case it will flip. This is what exactly is going on. And that itself will give you mixing action. Okay, because you are multiplying by what? Sign of LO. Right? You are doing this. That is what sign of LO. So you will get immediately same results and everything. Okay. So this is what passive mixer is. So here uh, the termination and filtering is at output and the third uh, class of mixers are called current driven uh, passive mixer. So, in this case what you are doing is you have a current and then you are switching that current back and forth and there is a I to V and this is your V out. I will explain this and we are done after that. So, this is V LO. And this IRF is generally this is used when your LNA output is itself current. Okay. And then you are channeling that current, you know, switching back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, this is another passive mixer using. Uh, so, this, this is part of our LNA. Okay. We will stop right here, please. I will see you on Friday.